onto the final part of Jack 3, in which I'm gonna die to an octopus. Okay, so this fight, this fucking part, is essentially going to involve me collecting every precursor orb, as well as any other little location that I haven't gone to yet, uh, which will involve using the hoverboard to get up to spots uh, from these vents in the sewers, find them in corners that are pretty decently hidden and such, uh, find them in areas I didn't actually really explore very well, like right there. Just find them anywhere, really. And including right here, where there is a pretty massive amount of fucking precursor orbs and metalhead gems in one place. It's probably the most rewarding little bit of area in the entire game. So, uh, this is all gonna be the first playthrough, by the way, because as I had found, in my first playthrough, I actually did get every single precursor orb. But, because we all know about the ones that glitched, unfortunately, it means that I did not get the full completion. Which, by the way, if you're wondering about that, uh, essentially, in order to actually get all the precursor orbs, you need to get... Uh, one before the final four or five and then the game just gives you five precursor orbs immediately which leads to you essentially getting the full 300 it's weird by the way yes I did indeed get my good mic back so that's pretty cool and I also have a new laptop which uh, you know I it is a little awkward on trying to get the commentary done for this video here because of it, but I'm sure I can make it work out for me in the end. So, sorry if it starts stuttering on my voice sometimes. Pretty sure it just did right there. I'm not too surprised. Uh, but yeah, I will say that getting all of these precursor orbs has been a bit of a chore, because I have missed a good few of them, and I am ashamed about that. But at the same time, I'm mostly angry at the fact the game glitched up and robbed me of my final few. Yeah, this one right here, you'll need to actually make a bit of a good jump to get there. Uh, about a flip in order to get up. Then right next to it will be the ladder one, so you know, pretty simple. The biggest problem uh, with getting that glitch is that I had to do all of this again. Well, at least in the first playthrough, you got to see me get all of this anyway, so... You didn't really miss anything, luckily. But still. And yeah, I did miss this one right over here. Uh, a bit annoying. I mean, she's seen it a few times already. And this one right here in this box. Somehow I missed that too. And there was one right here in this corner. Which, by the way, once I get this, I get the reminder that, yes, I can now buy more secrets. Which, I can now buy the final secret in the game. Uh, that being the unlimited dark, uh, light jack. So, yes, we have now unlocked every single thing in this game, essentially. Except one other thing, but that's only in hero mode. Which I do on my own time. So, I guess I should bring up uh, the hero mode thing, shouldn't I? I, sh I should bring up, like, what the hero mode unlockable is. It's so special, and it's only in that mode. Also, that glitch happens. So, hero mode. It actually has uh, a different kind of list of unlockables for the precursor orbs. Mostly, it gives you the cheats very early on compared to beforehand. However, uh, yeah, here's this one that I could have gone beforehand by missed. So, in order to actually take note on this, you remember the scrapbook, right? You know how we got the scrapbook in our secrets. In hero mode, there is a thing called the mega scrapbook. 
Now, in order to get the Mega Scrapbook, you have to get about a hundred precursor orbs and then buy it. So you have to get pretty far in the game to get that. And I did, and I did get it. So, yeah, I did unlock these Mega Scrapbook, so I did indeed get everything in the game. Now, you won't see me do that because, quite honestly, it's just what you're seeing right here. Only, you know, I took my time of it, including uh, right here at the end with these ones, which I missed. It just requires you to go around that little corner there, and there you go. The final uh, batch of Precursor Orbs. Which, this is where you would have been done. This is where you would have gotten all of them. Had you not fucked up like I did and gotten the glitch. Because of the glitch, because of that happened to me, I have to go and do the second playthrough now, which you're about to see, in order to fix all of this. So here is the race. Jesus. Here is the race where I essentially did uh, get all the precursor orbs I missed. So, uh, quite a few things would lead to this being glitched. Uh, sometimes the gun courses would get this. Sometimes uh, one of the mini games, I believe the Pac Man one. No, not the Pac Man one. It was. It was the fucking. Uh, the dark machine thing with the whole. Pressing the buttons around the circle stuff uh, was that one. Uh, sometimes that might glitch up because it might uh, pop in for you, but then it goes to the ground and then it gets stuck on the ground and disappears and then it's gone. Like, there are a few months where it can happen, but the most common occurrence for where this problem occurs is the races. Like, on the first race, which you do in the main mission stuff, anyway, uh, you can actually glitch it up by going, I believe it was bronze, and then going for gold at that point, which it then glitches up and not rewards you anything. Here, it glitches up on this race the most. If you go directly for gold, if you get the gold immediately, it glitches up. If you go silver, then gold, it glitches up. If you go bronze, then silver, it glitches up. And if you go silver immediately, it glitches up. The only way around this is to go bronze to gold here. And the thing is, half of them, like the, uh, the bronze to silver thing and everything, those are like random glitches that don't always happen as far as I know shit like fucking uh, silver to gold that does glitch up that always glitches up consistently and going direct for gold always glitches up consistently but Going bronze and then gold, it's fine there. And you're about to see that happen. Well, like, you can actually, I heard this from all the way to gold, actually. Uh, never mind. I think it was actually bronze to gold glitched up, and then going to red for gold is fine. I. I had to do this a lot, okay? And there were a lot of moments where it fucked up. And I got just very angry and frustrated and I just wanted it done. And I was hoping to God I would find an opening and I did here uh, by just getting directed gold here. Which, it has been a while since I've done this. But yeah, there were a lot of moments where the orbs did indeed glitch in this race in particular. And I fucking hate that. And it does happen in the original PS2 version, but in the PS4 version, I think it's actually worse. So, 
Yeah, uh, I fucking hate this glitch. And it is a major game breaker. But once you get around it, you get them all. Found all 600 precursor orbs. Enjoy Jack Stalish new duds. Which, uh... I think he gets new clothes. I don't think that's the case. But it brings the illusion that there is the case. Uh, as far as I know, there is nothing special with getting every precursor orb in hero mode. So, yeah. It's just the same fucking message, really. So that's it. That is Jack Free. I have 100% of the game, and now I'm going to show you every unlockable. So, what's the first one, then? Well, the first one, Secrets, is level selects, which are all, you know, you can go to any level you want, do any mission you want. I'm not bothering. There's also the cutscenes, which are in the scene player. But there is also the scrapbook. This is the normal scrapbook you get from playing it normally and going through that. Mega scrapbook, you can't get until you do hero mode and unlock that by getting about two, like a hundred fucking precursor orbs and paying it that way, I believe. I forgot how much uh, mega scrapbook is, but it is the most expensive out of all of them. A lot of great art. A lot of great background art and CG stuff that you're about to see here. But, the Mega Scrapbook always has the most. This is like a nice little sampler of stuff. You get a nice good bit of stuff here. But, we all know the main course in the Mega. And uh, the Mega does have a whole bunch of like developer stuff. A whole bunch of little developer gags and such around. And a whole bunch of, like, designs for, I believe, Jack 1 and 2 as well. So, a whole bunch of shit all over Jack Free's Mega Scrapbook. Really rewarding stuff for anybody who's into that. And, you know, I always show it, so I am kind of into that. There are people who wonder, like, why would you bother unlocking this? Why would you bother looking at this? I like looking through and looking through and just flipping through and all that and just seeing all the great art and such because I appreciate that shit and I appreciate game development. I love that stuff. And yeah, you can see just how much effort Naughty Dog did put into designing this one. And I will say, the desert... Is a very good area. It's a very big open area with like a lot to it in a sense while still being very desolate and shit. And I mean, the car driving thing is great. I don't mind that. I find it enjoyable. But I will admit that Jack 3 is weaker than Jack 2. Because Jack 2 just had more going for it. It had more enjoyable missions. It had more fucking, you know, interesting stuff going on. This one kind of had less. And I, I do think that Jack Frey suffered for it. And it is a much more glitchy than fucking Jack 2 as well. But you know, I still like Jack 3. I still like Jack 1 and 2. I'm not exactly a big fan of Dexter. Like, I don't hate Dexter. I think it's okay for the PSP. But it's honestly worse than all three of these games. Yes, I do think Daxter is worse than Jack 1. Because Jack 1 still had a lot more going for it. It still had a lot more life to it. Daxter felt very empty. 
And it was also very fucking lame. Like, I was expecting to have a lot of fun playing as Dexter in that game. And instead, I just went on a bug hunting thing. And also, that's a very nice picture of Veeger. And here's the girls. Including the white background, for some reason. It's a nice CG, honestly. It's a nice pose. There's a very nice shot right there. There's that. Nice shot. Bit of a fan for the, uh... You know, the backgrounds and such. Some of this I'm pretty sure you've already seen before from, like, looking at reviews and such. Because they always use that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, Mega Scrapbook Time. All the big stuff is here now. The characters, uh, the development shit. All the good stuff. All the CG and everything. And you're gonna see from all of it, it was gonna give him shorter hair. Give him a nice little bit of a shorter cut. You know, a lot going on for the design. Including that really nice picture there. That was a really nice drawing then. And yeah, there's Jack 1, 2, and 3 right there. You get to see how uh, Jack's evolved throughout the games. And yeah, there's, there's all these other characters that appeared in Jack 3. And all their different designs and such. Cleaver is not much different. And yeah, there's Errol. Also, nice Dexter. Just, we all know what you were looking at, Dexter. We all know what you were looking at. So, here's what I'm going to say about how I feel about the game so far from what I've played. Because we only have Jack X and the Lost, uh, the, the Lost uh, Frontier left. If I were to rank these games from the top to the worst, Jack 2 would be number 1, obviously. Jack 3 would be edging a, like below it. Like, it'd be second, but close to first as well. I feel like both of them deserve first. Jack 1 is below it on third. And Daxter is last right now. Daxter's in fourth. I would prefer playing the original free games over that PSP game anytime. And that's gun designs there. And here's the game stuff right here. Here's all the stuff in Maya, by the way. You can see this was all made in Maya. And here's all the models of the, uh, you know, all the Otzels, which are really nice. And there's also one picture I really like. It's a bit memey, but it's great. And it happens to be one of the worlds where I decided to replace all the textures with Fs. You don't believe me, do you? You don't believe me that they went and made a whole F world. They fucking did. They done fucking did. You thought that thumbnail was memes? No. They did it first. They memed first. I wish there was a way to essentially get into that level and just see all the Fs. Anyway, now it's time for the model viewer. So now we're going to see all the models of Jack 1 and 2 as well as 3. And believe it or not, but Jack 2 and 3 actually have voice clips. Now, of course, these guys don't. You got your flat flat again. Uh, you got... Let's see, who else do we have outside of the flat flat? Uh, there's Jack from Jack 1. There's the Lurkers. The original design. You see they got a little bit of a beady eye there. Blue Sage only appears in the last level. All the Sages appear in the last level except for, you know, Samos. Here's a few little poses. There's the Geologist. Only appears in the second world. Uh, for the progressive base and shit. There's the original Daxter in the first cutscene. Look at the very opening. Go ahead and see him ever again. Yellow Sage, again, the last level of the game. Really nice designs, honestly. Red Sage, last level. Uh, about the weakest one there for the sages. 
there was a sculptor, by the way. Really cool dude. You never get to see these guys ever again, by the way. Never hints at ever again in any Jack game. There's Claw. He's just fucking done, but he was like one of the first bosses. The plant monster is not here though. There's the gambler. I don't think he ever makes an appearance ever again. He might have something to do with the races and shit, but who knows. There's Willard. Everyone's fan favorite. Willard's awesome. Next to him is Gordy. He's all right. They gave you a lot of fucking uh, power of orbs. There's the mayor. Don't know what happened to him. There's the fisherman. Uh, for the famous fishing minigame. Which I many people actually like, <laughs> believe it or not. The farmer. Who does appear again in Daxter, but outside of that, uh, not much else is known about him. Boggy Billy, from that really annoying shooting game to protect his shit, which was used again, I believe, Hero's Tale. Explorer, who I believe is actually Jack's uncle or something, because of the way he responds to him. Like, who knows? Bird Lady, uh, she's the one that saved, helped us uh, take care of the Flut Flut. And, uh, there's Gull. The main villain is one of the two main villains. The other one being Maya. He has like balls hanging out from him. Nice. And yeah, there's Maya. These two only appear in Jack 1 and are never mentioned ever again in the rest of Jack series. I don't know why. And there's Warrior. Looking as heroic as ever and yet he is a complete pussy and cries like a bitch in the fucking game. And that's it. So, believe it or not, there are actually voice clips in the Jack 2 and 3 stuff, and I'm about to show you the Jack 2 stuff right now. That's just all part of the package, baby. That's just who I am. I just gotta reach down inside and... <laughs> yeah, it's a bunch of jokey little stuff going on with the voice actors, really. And I will show off all of them. So Jack 2 and 3 have the same stuff, and so does Daxter in uh, both of the Jack 2 and 3 stuff. Fuck a dog right there. Uh, next up is Brooder. Has no lines, unfortunately, but I like Brooder. Next up uh, is Crimson Guard. And next up after him, uh, you all know him at this point. Game! Games are for wimps! Get out in the real world! It's called the sun! That round bright thing in the sky? Jeez. Oh, now, seriously though, this is gonna be one hell of a game. World is enormous. Scenery, state of the art, the action is sizzling. I only wish I was getting some back end points, you know? <laughs> yep, Baron Praxis. He has a lot of lines too. And I mean, who. You gotta like the voice actor for this guy. He's very good, very famous. Young Jack is here, no voices because he never talks ever in the game, much like in Jack 1. Core, he doesn't have any voices, even though you would love to hear him talk some shit. And next up, Young Samos. Samos has no lines, despite the fact he would have a lot to say, wouldn't he? There's Errol, again, no lines, but after him is Crew. Well, to be quite frank, I had to drop some weight for this part, but I think it was worth it. Yes, uh, I'm at a lean and mean 520 right now. It took some work to get down to there. I've got a personal trainer and the whole bit, you know. I ate him, uh, but not before I lost a good amount. Yep, he has a lot to say too. And not only that, there's also this character. Well, you know, it's, it's funny, it's a funny thing because there's a lot of pressure on the mic. Yeah, I mean, like, everybody's there's like five or six people watching you at once, and they feed you the lines, and I tell you, it's never good enough. Oh, they, well, they, they just want more. But I gotta tell you, at the same time, it's just, it's a lot of fun, you know? I, I do have fun working, and I, I love the people. I love, I love, you know, people are interesting to me, but just as long as they don't get too close. Yeah, they have me in a booth here, and I have this thing about people getting too close, so they have to stay sort of outside the booth, and then I do my thing uh, in here, and then I go outside, but I don't shake hands because I got a thing about germs. 
Yeah, that's why I keep this thing right here on my belt, see? And I just squeeze it. It's just, it's a dry wash for the hands and then no germs. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> and the other thing I'm always very demanding about is water. I gotta have plenty of water because my throat gets real dry. It's not easy being Vin. It's not easy being Vin, everybody. It's not easy being Vin. And right after him is everyone's favorites. I hope this game's fun. I mean, I do my part. I'm practically carrying the whole thing, you know. The next game should be called Orange Lightning Strikes Again. Orange Lightning Strikes Twice. You know, I think we should branch out. Shouldn't just uh, feel completely anchored to the whole adventure genre, you know. I think we should be branching out. I got the moves. I got the moves. The voice actor for Daxter loves playing Daxter every time. By the way, I am now going to show you all the lines in the Jack 2 character stuff here right fucking now. Well, Daxter's his own little, uh, little furball. Um, I can't really say he takes all the glory because, uh, you know, he brings in the women and I take them home with me. Well, I want to direct the next game. You know, I've been working on my command voice. Listen. Action! What do you think? Not bad, huh? Action! See, I can do it. I'll grow a beard and look shabby chic and talk all intellectual about shot blocking and image systems and metaphors. Steven, baby, I want your job. Well, I'm really looking into do some, uh, some dramatic work to really show my sensitive side. Um, and, and, and I'm working right now on my own sitcom. I'd just like to do a shout out real quick to LaShondra. <laughs> well, there was the time when Tess and I were caught in a hip hog. Ooh, it was a hot set and we were, you know, getting into our characters. Ah, fun times, fun times. Jack and I go way back. Very few people know this, but actually we were working together on the stage version of Spartacus Does Rome. Well, it was an adaptation, an adult version, you know. But yeah, Jack's great. Jack's great. Real pro. Well, you know, sometimes I just get a little angry. I like to have my own personal space, and when people invade it, I, I just get mad, and, you know, I can't, I can't deal with that sometimes because, you know, I'm an artist, and I need my time, and I'm creating new things and outlets for this process, and sometimes the hindrance of people coming up to me and telling me what I'm supposed to do just really pisses me off. Oh, well, I did it for the money. I do everything for the money. Hey, you know, I got a serious mortgage in Beverly Hills. The, the story, well, I mean, you know, to be honest, the writers were, well, let's just say there were a few plot errors and some of the characters were painfully two-dimensional. And what was that stilted, on-the-nose expository dialogue crap I was fed with? Ah, jeez. Otherwise, no, I, I, I love the script. Uh, well, I wish I had a stunt double for my death scene. Man, the animator wanted to throw me like 50 feet through the air and then have 20 tons of 50 gallon drums fall on top of me. I mean, who do these guys think I am? Some superhero? I mean, look, I've worked on some big action films before, but 50 feet without a wire? Are they crazy? Oh, I didn't let them get near me. No one got into my trailer. As a bad guy, I felt I needed to stay in character, you know? Keep my emotional distance. You can't be friends with the good guys. Besides, most of them were pussies anyway. What do you expect from the Baron? It was a pleasure working on this one. Seriously, I hope Baron Praxis comes back from the dead so I can kick some more butt in the sequel. <laughs> and Dexter, baby, hook me up with Ashlyn, will ya? She won't return my calls, man. I don't play games. They're too hard on my heart. <laughs> Blood pressure and all, you know. I can't get the character to do the thingy, you know, jump right or spin. I just don't have the game gene. I could play for years on the same level and never win, so I let Jack and Daxter play for me. Yeah, the glow's good, hey, you know, but it's funny down here. It's, I, you know, I try a moose to fight it, sort of to fight the sheen, because it really, with the lights down here and whatnot, it really, it really has this sheen to it. And I picked me up some of this, it, it just fights the sheen. It's sort of a moose, you wanna try it? Uh, not too close. I want to be the romantic lead next time. I want to show the world how sexy I am. Sexy, sexy beast that I am, baby. Uh, hey, could you get the lights before you go? Yes, well, I think Crew is begging for someone to love him. His life is so devoid of hope and promise, so lacking in identity and a sense of belonging, that he turns inward with hate and several loathing, and that pain fuels his angst and motivation for destruction. Oh yeah, and his guns and chicks are cool too, man. It was great fun filming with Daxter. He's such a pro. 
and he doesn't take up a lot of much needed screen space. And there you go. Now, here comes all the stuff for Jack 3, which you might think there would be no new voice lines and such, and for Jack and Dax 2, yes. But believe it or not, there are characters here who do indeed have voices. Uh, I guess it was his rugged manliness, but yet someone who was also not afraid to touch the inner me, you know what I mean? Uh, Torn's that guy we all want to be, the cool, quiet guy that just sits there and when, when your back's up against a wall, you know, he ain't gonna go dancing with you, but he'll, he'll cover your back. I was like, oh my God, I got the part, for real? And I was like, dude, you won't be disappointed. I can like act and stuff. I even took a class. I mean, wow, to be an actress is like so cool. I couldn't wait to tell my therapist. Well, the thing about Ashlyn is she, you know, she got a great set of guns. She, yeah, you know, the ones you shoot with. And uh, yeah, she's good, she's strong, she's intelligent. Uh, yeah, fire and hole. <laughs> Where did you read that? Like, you totally have to talk to my therapist about that. But, you know, Daxter, he's like, he's totally neat. He's a hottie, like burning volcano hot. I mean, the whole like animal thing, it's a total act. He's really sophisticated in real life, for sure. He orders wine with lunch and everything. Whatever. Like, Jack is so last year. Just yanking your chain. Jack's cool, too. Jack, sweetie, call me. It was so totally awesome to do Tess. She's, like, a really deep character. I can, like, totally relate to her. She, like, she loves Daxter, but she's torn by her loyalties to the underground. And her outfits, they were, like, really awesome. I really, totally love the writer on this project. He is hot, too. But, you know, like, he should have written me a bigger part. I mean, hello? I'm like a big up-and-coming star. Get a clue? Maybe I should have dated him more. You want me to feather you upside the head? i do it. I'm hot on that little Otzel. I like a little animal in my men. I like them to have some hair on their chest. And Daxter's got a nice tail. Yeah, I did all my own stunts. It was fun to knock some heads around. Oh, but I feel sorry for those guys in the metal head suits. I think I broke a nose or two. Oh, I would love to do another game. Hey, Jack, I'll arm wrestle you for the lead part. Would I be willing to take off more clothes in the next game? Oh, honey, you couldn't handle me with less clothes. Yeah, I love Jack. He's so supportive on the set. What a pro. Even with his recent brush with the law, he was always in, ready to roll. What did Jack do to get arrested? Oh, <laughs> I can't talk about that. Ask his agent. But let me just say, it was an awesome party. Did I like doing the game? Oh, I loved it. I mean, aside from the trailer, which, you know, I'd, I think I'd want it to be bigger next time. And there you go. That is Jack Free. So, we don't have that much left, really. We have a bit of commentary here, which I will show you one commentary thing. I'm not going to show you all of them, but there is a lot of commentary in this game. A lot from the developers. And... Gives you a good amount of insight, honestly, into the whole development of the game and such, and all the cutscenes and everything. But that's it. Next time, we're doing Jack X. We're going for full-on racing. We did a bit of racing this game, but next time, we're doing full-on racing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then for Jack X. So this is the beginning of the intro movie for Jack 3. And uh, in the intro movie, obviously, it's important to establish the setting, the wasteland. It's uh, important to establish the characters. And also important to uh, bring everyone who hasn't played uh, Jack 1 and Jack 2 up to speed with the story. So uh, as we're seeing the uh, ship rocket across the wasteland here, uh, when I was animating this, there are actually no trees, no cactuses, no big rocks for uh, my reference. So when they put them in the game, I was relieved when uh, my ship wasn't actually passing through any of it. Now this guy, Viger, he's one of the uh, new characters, he's the uh, main villain of the piece. And what's interesting about Viger is uh, we're always uh, trying to refine the work that we do, and uh, we did his facial animation system slightly differently than we've done in the past, and it actually worked out very well so that all the new characters in this game use the new facial animation system. So let's see, we got uh, our favorite uh, feathered friend Pecker coming in here, the half monkey, half bird character. And uh, dropping in right behind him a second later is uh, Daxter, who's always trying to upstage him. Uh, one of the things we tried to play up in this game that we had a lot of fun with in Jack 2 is the rivalry between Pecker and Daxter, you know, the two uh, cute animal mascots. And so we really sort of pushed that in this game. 
Um, we got Ashlyn uh, Shashing with her uh, sexy walk right up there. And uh, you're about to see something that looks very simple. Uh, Ashlyn putting something into Jack's hand and sliding her fingers off. But uh, in fact, doing moves like that, uh, passing uh, things back and forth between characters, takes a while. That little thing there took me a couple of hours. Now, as the ship flies away and leaves a big dust cloud in its wake and uh, dissipates to reveal Jack, uh, sorry, Daxter and Pecker, uh, one of the interesting things is uh, the effects animation, such as fire and smoke and dust, is all done later uh, by our effects animators. What we do is we simply place a little uh, node in the scene to say, here, put a dust cloud here, or put a flaming ball of fire here, and they all take care of that much later on. So we don't actually get to see it until it's in the game. And here they are all walking into the desert.